Hello and welcome to Medway School of Pharmacy. My name is Lynn Gallagher and I am the Health and Safety Manager for the school. This is a health and safety induction video which aims to give you the information you need to keep you, your fellow students and members of staff safe whilst working in the school's laboratories and classrooms. You may well be thinking to yourself, why do we need this? It's a waste of time. It will not happen to me. Here are a few incidences that have happened in recently in various universities. There is also the legal aspects which we are duty bound to make you aware of, as well as university policy. However, the overwhelming reason for this part of the video is to emphasise that not only do we have a duty of care to you, but you also have a duty to take reasonable care of yourself and others who may be affected by your acts and omissions. As part of this duty, you will be expected to cooperate with the university to follow their health and safety policies to keep you safe, which in the current COVID crisis is extremely important. This will be covered in more depth later in the video. In other words, follow the health and safety rules, which includes wearing lab coats and glasses when asked to do so. Part two, fire safety. In this section, I will outline the arrangements you will need to follow in case of a fire in one of the buildings at Medway campus. Please ensure that you know where the emergency exits are for the rooms that you are occupying. If you discover a fire, please activate the fire alarm by pushing the button on the red panel. Alert anyone else in the area and leave by the nearest exit. Go to the assembly point. In the unlikely event of a fire occurring in the building during your classes, You'll be told by a member of staff to leave the room. Please do not pick up your belongings first. You'll be escorted to the assembly point by a member of staff. This slide describes the sounds of the fire alarm for each building and the corresponding assembly point. All your laboratories will take place in Anson building. Its fire alarm is a continuous sound. The assembly point is outside the Hawk building towards the University of Kent building and is signposted with the letter B. Pilkington and Library have sirens as alarms and an assembly point is in the lower car park area. Please follow directions of staff in that area if there is an evacuation. Testing of fire alarms is carried out every Wednesday morning. You do not have to evacuate the building during this test. Once per term, a test fire drill is conducted. You will be asked to evacuate the building and follow the procedures as per a real fire. Part 3. Laboratory Procedures, Rules of the Labs. For each lab session, you will need to bring your lab coat, safety glasses and an A4 hardback book. If you do not possess the necessary equipment, lab coats or a starter kit containing lab coats, glasses and hardback books can be purchased from the University of Kent online store at cost price. Glasses and lab books can also be purchased from the school. You will not be allowed entry into the lab without the appropriate equipment. There are seven teaching laboratories. In all the labs there is a strict no eating, drinking or chewing gum policy. Your mobile phone must not be used for texting, social media or making phone calls during the lab sessions. Phones must remain on silent. Appropriate dress must be worn. This means no shorts, no short skirts or open toed shoes. Long hair must be tied back. Please follow the instructions listed on this slide whilst waiting entry into the science labs. Please put on your lab coat, glasses and get all the necessary items required out of your bag. All laboratories have an area where you can store your outside coats and bags. <clears throat> you will be asked to keep your working area clean and tidy during your session. On leaving labs, please clean your bench space and wash your hands. Remember, wearing protective lab gloves during your lab session is to protect your hands being damaged by chemicals or other contaminants. To protect yourself and others if you need to leave the lab or use an item which is not part of the experimental equipment, for example, pen, mobile or door handle, please remove your potentially contaminated gloves. Please do not touch your face whilst wearing your gloves. Risk assessments identify the risk of a harm a certain thing can cause and the likelihood of that harm actually being able to occur. For example, crossing a road has a risk of being run over by a moving vehicle. 
but if you cross a deserted road, the likelihood of that occurring is zero. All the laboratory practicals you will take part in will have been risk assessed by a member of staff. These risks will be documented in your lab manuals and your academic lead in the labs will talk you through these risks. If you are late for a laboratory, you may not be able to take part in the practical if you miss the health and safety briefing. If you are unfortunate enough to have an accident or involved in an incident, please report this to your academic supervising your class. All accidents incidents will be reported and investigated using the online accident reporting system on the University of Greenwich portal. The school has first aiders, but if they are unavailable, all security officers are first aiders. If you have an accident or an incident outside of Anson, please notify security who will be able to offer assistance. If you have a chemical or biological spillage, please contact a member of staff immediately. They will ensure that this is dealt with safely. Section 4. How to set up your computer equipment at home to minimise long-term issues such as RSI. This slide suggests optimum setup when using your computer equipment at home for extended periods of time. Suggestions include having a separate keyboard for your laptop, using a holder to ensure that your eyes are level with the top of the screen, and having a chair which supports your back. If you wish to find out more information on this topic, you can search YouTube for home working with laptops and PCs or use another search engine. One of the most important things to remember is to get up and move. Take a break every hour, even if it's just five minutes walk around the room. Part 5. COVID-19. What you need to know. The University has carried out everything reasonably practical to satisfy their legal responsibility to minimise risks, recognising you cannot completely eliminate the risk of COVID-19. Additional COVID-19 risk assessments and operational procedures have been put in place together with the necessary campus facility services to support the new arrangements. These arrangements may alter in light of the changing government advice, but you will be kept informed of any significant changes to procedures. The university is offering a blended model of teaching. This means we'll be combining face-to-face -face sessions, seminars and lab classes run by tutors which will take place in line with social distances rules and online lectures. Each building will have hand sanitizer stations, one-way systems and the room will be laid out to accommodate the government requirements for social distancing. Whilst in the building there is a requirement to maintain social distancing for a one-in, one-out policy in community areas such as toilets and adhering to any one-way systems. You may also be required to wear face coverings in certain areas. All students should regularly wash their hands with soap and water for a minimum of 20 seconds. Coughs and sneezes should be covered with a tissue and disposed of immediately or cough into your elbow if no tissue, followed by the washing of hands. If you become unwell with COVID type symptoms, do not attend university or if at university already, please wear a covering over your face. Go home immediately. Do not use public transport unless there is no alternative. Please use the government track and trace system to obtain a COVID-19 test to check whether you have the virus. Notify your personal advisor immediately by email. All people you have come in contact with must self-isolate for 14 days unless your test comes back as negative for COVID-19. If you are asked to self-isolate due to being in contact with infected persons, please notify your personal advisor by email. This concludes the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or want to raise any health and safety concerns, please email me at l.j.gallagher at gre.ac.uk. Thank you.